Holy shit. Go be right. handsome, man. Right. 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 Uh, I'll be introducing about our project. So what we're going to do is we're, our theme is about ending poverty. And <laughs> I thought of many ways on how to end poverty, me and my team. And I thought, how do you end poverty? I mean, in a way, get your own side income uh, in the time of COVID. Because the way I used to think is that I go out, hustle, maybe sell burgers to my friends or what, you can get your income. But now... Uh, how do you do that? You can't even go out. It's a lockdown. So I thought a lot of people now are uh, joining um, entertainment. They're trying to find entertainment online. And everyone is on their phone, their computers. So I thought about streaming. What about streaming? Streaming could be, a, uh, it is a hobby for some people. And, and to some who do it well, can get a side income. And to those who do it better, it becomes a career for themselves. Uh, so today I'll be talking about how do you actually start streaming. But before that, I want there's a important discussion that I would like to uh, give out. So why do you want to stream in the first place? Streaming might not be for everyone. Streaming has its own um, challenges, as do so any other careers. So streaming, you can stream anything you want on any platform, platform such as, I think there's Mixer, there's Twitch, there's YouTube, or even Instagram Live, you can do that. But uh, for today, I'll be focusing on streaming on Twitch, uh, which is a platform that I personally use. And also, I'll be teaching you how to set up your stream through the function of OBS, OBS Studio specifically. Uh, so before that, we go into detail on that part of the section of the uh, this session. I'll be talking about why should you stream. I mean, uh, exactly like if you stream, how do you do it? Is there like a big uh, impact? Is there like a big what do you call that? Mm, is there like a big? Is there a big? What do you call that? Industry market for it. So right now. Uh, it has blown up a lot that everyone knows about esports. Everyone knows about games as such as uh, Valorant. You know, in uh, Malaysia, we we all like to play PUBG. So esports is a thing now. Uh, since we had gotten better in uh, our technological improvements, <laughs> let's say, I'm just briefing it. So, mm. so a lot of these uh these games, if you play alone. Sure, it is fun, but a lot of people uh, would like to see how people play and learn how people play. So a lot of you see a lot of these pro players, they would stream their content. They would show, oh, this is how I play. And from that, they can get income. That's like the, the surface of it. It's how I see it. These pro players will, for example, a game called Valorant, they'll show like how good they are in the game. And uh, they will stream it for a lot of their audience. And the audience will uh, give a lot of feedback, love their stream, subscribe to their stream. So subscribing uh, has income that comes to it uh, in Twitch. However, not a lot of, uh, it doesn't mean that when you stream, you must stream a game that you play very well. It might be, uh, you could be a variety streamer where you stream uh, games that you play, but not necessarily that you do it well. Uh, a lot of streamers I see, I mean a lot, maybe more than 50% I see, a lot of them are not even pro players. However, they stream games that they love to play, they have fun with their friends, and through that comedic purpose, they gain an audience, they gain a community from it. So from there, people can just subscribe to them and continue watching their content as long as they make content. Uh, also, a disclaimer for... Twitch. Twitch has its own community of its own. Uh, it has like people who are, how do I say this? Trolls. That's the only way I could say it. 
they have these trolls, they have the, uh, the good people, the good community there. So you have to be careful of what you're streaming and how you portray yourself uh, as, a, as a streamer. And it would reflect a lot on who views you. Because as an example, if you play a game and you rage a lot, you get mad, you curse. So these types of uh, these types of outcomes would attract a lot of these trolls, as you say. Uh, a lot of them love this kind of content. They love to see people get angry. They love to see people, you know, be mad, get out of control. So you won't, you won't attract a lot of, I'd say, good people. Uh, so, so Twitch by itself. My pers uh, my personal experience with Twitch. And how I started streaming is that uh, one day I was playing a lot of games, but then I thought to myself, huh, I want to review my games. I want to see how I actually play it. And maybe I could uh, post it on my Instagram because my Instagram is quite like a desert, like a Sahara desert. It's like nothing there. I don't post anything. My, my, I don't post my, pic, uh, my face. I don't post selfies. I don't post anything at all. So I thought, why not I just post things about games or like videos or content I could make. So with that, I started to stream where I asked my friend on how, how do you start streaming? And he told me like the essentials of it or what, OB, uh, what operating system should you use? Uh, what applications or what application you should use for your streaming? And he mentioned Twitch. Uh, at the time, I wasn't really exposed a lot to Twitch contents. All I know is that Twitch is a platform where people go stream. <laughs> That's all I knew at that moment. So I didn't watch a lot of content there, but I tried to stream on there just to uh, have a gameplay there that I can uh, extract from and just download the gameplay contents that I have without actually recording the gameplay with my um, GPU <laughs> because it takes a lot of storage. Uh, yeah, it uses a lot of storage and... And at that time, my, well, this is going to detail, but by that time, my CPU wasn't really as good. So I didn't think my computer could uh, really handle the, the recording. So that's why I opt to use Twitch and just stream there without thinking that I won't have any viewers at all. I don't, cool. I, don't, I don't care about any viewers. And I would just take my voz from there. That is how I actually started off uh, streaming. And then... I didn't stream for a long time because I thought, oh, I think this is, this is quite useless. Why should I even stream? So I stopped until, until this project came along. I'll be honest with you, until this project came along, we all, we all thought, huh, how do we end for <laughs> And I, I thought to myself again, okay, maybe streaming. Streaming. Can I do it? I didn't even stream for a, a serious uh, thought in mind. I streamed just, just because, you know? So, uh, so what I did was I gave myself a challenge. I saw, I told myself, Hey, maybe I could try streaming again, but with a bit of seriousness and actually put effort into my streams and see if I can get any more experience from this, not to say viewers, but just experience, uh, on you know, handling on the, um, from OBS handling, uh, you know. If people talk to me on chat, do I really get any viewers at all? So this is how I tried to expose myself through uh, streaming. But this was uh, a week ago. Uh, so I did it for five days straight, I think. Yeah, I think it was for five days straight. I started streaming. And I think on the second day is where uh, Michael came along. Michael Spidey, the guy in the Nike shirt. <laughs> he came because when I was streaming with my friends, I, I was streaming, I was playing games specifically Valorant, we were playing. And at the end of the match, so Michael, he, he copied his uh, Twitch ID, the Twitch link, and posted it in, our, in the all chat of the game, the match. And so we opened it and we saw him streaming. And that's how we became friends. You know, one thing led to the other. And so here he is now joining the stream. <laughs> and through there, I saw... Uh, Michael, the way he streamed, the way he engaged with his uh, his viewers, you know, people who subscribe to him, people who follow him, the way he celebrated them, 
it was very uh humbling to see it was very you know um awing i think other word is it awing i think so then i thought huh maybe i could learn a bit from this guy and i saw i saw his uh skincare reveal in like you know with the widget that widget so i thought huh Maybe I could improve my stream a bit from this. So I just put the uh, the what the followers goal widget thing. Uh, that's all I did from that inspiration. <laughs> and from Michael also I I got to know a lot of the other Malaysian streamers. Uh, such as I think it was Verified Psycho, Limey, uh, and and so on. I couldn't remember their names already. But from there I saw the efforts they gave in uh, for streaming. <clears throat> and it is I see as a side as a well a hobby that they love to do they love to spend time doing it especially in the lockdown where you can't even go anywhere <laughs> and and all of them i saw they are affiliated by twitch and a lot of them i see uh, these malaysian streamers they uh they have a side income from it so this is how i feel that yes streaming can be a hobby if it doesn't work for you it can just be a hobby for you. But if it works, and if you do it right, it can be a career, and you can go far. Uh, okay, so that's, we'll, we'll done, we were done with the first session. So the second session is how we actually start uh, streaming. So I think the first step is for you to make your own Twitch account. Uh, I won't be explaining on that part. It's very quite simple. Just go to Twitch and just create a sign up or your, your main account. But I will be explaining on how do you actually set up your stream. Uh, what, what do you need to have to stream? So I think the most important part of streaming is that you need a camera. Now I know a lot of people, they stream without a camera. They just stream a bit gameplay. And it might work for some people. But if you personally, if you're watching a gameplay, for some reason, us as humans, we like to see who is playing, right? So I'd like to know who is behind that, uh, who is behind the mouse and keyboard, who is doing this, this pro movements, you know, and who is doing all this uh, very funny content. So I'd like to see engage in their face, even though we're not there with them physically, but we are, you know, uh, focusing on them, just looking at them. It's, it's similar to FaceTime, uh, sorry, like video call. So when you talk to your friends, your family, sometimes you like to see them to be able to be in a moment with them rather than on the phone or just voice notes, you know? So uh, I'll be talking over the how you set up your OBS. For this particular session, I'll be using OBS, uh, OBS Studio. OBS Studio is free. You can just download it for free. It doesn't cost one cent. It just costs your internet money. So I'll be sharing my screen so you can see what I'm doing. Sorry. Okay. Uh, this is not the raw. This is not OBS. Uh, newborn. This is uh what I have already when I uh downloaded OBS. But I will show you what it might look like when it's uh it's a newborn. So here. I'll just say um for instance I'll just type streaming. Uh, can you guys see the screen? Thumbs up if you can see. All right, okay. I'll just write here streaming. So ignore in game, ignore BRB, and ignore intermission. Uh, pretend that the three of them are not there, <laughs> and just pretend that streaming is. Okay, so when you first start on your OBS, this is what you will see without the three, uh, three first rows. And here you have your sources. Here you have your scenes. Here you have your audio mixture your scene transitions, and here are where you start your stream, you start recording if you like to record and not stream. And but first thing you might do is, some people like to go through their settings first. So I'll go over the settings. So when you open up settings, this is what you'll see. General stream, output, audio, video, hotkeys, and advanced. So 90 to 95% of the time, uh, I don't even touch anything here only a bit of five percent i touch upon because by default it is already 
how you say integrated uh, as a optimized default i think that's the word so what i like to go in is uh well this is your preference language you can uh, pick you know, rackney dark or you know i just i just like to go dark is uh the most default one and here is stream so importantly here is where you start to uh say okay obs i want you to stream on youtube okay obs i want you to stream on twitch so here's, here is where you do it you have all these uh categories here twitch this is youtube facebook we stream and i think twitter i didn't know twitter was there so twitch so this is where i want to go so i click on twitch server just keep it uh, auto recommended and when you click on twitch this one is uh, pre-logged in mine is pre-logged in so when you do get into obs and you click uh, you uh, you click on twitch you will see a button they'll say uh log in i think i think it's logged in or the stream key you can either do both you can uh put in your stream key and put it into the obs on this section of uh, the OBS settings or you can just log in through your Twitch here which I've already done and this is what it will look like and so for the output there's a simple output mode simple and advanced I recommend you go to advanced so that you can have uh, more um, you can have more details uh, for your OBS and most of this I would not touch except for encoder so encoder NVIDIA and X264 so NVIDIA uh, NVEC is actually your uh, GPU if you are using an NVIDIA graphics card. So if you're using that, uh, you can click on this one. Or if you want to use your CPU or you have a streaming PC and a third party PC that you can use to stream your content, which is not your main, uh, your main desktop, you can use X264. But for me personally, I'm using an NVIDIA graphics card. So I'll be using NVIDIA NVEC. And the rescale output, uh, depending on your resolution of your monitor, you can set it 1920 and 1080. 1080, 1920 and 1080 is the your dimension for a 1080 uh, HD image video. And for the rate control, I did, uh, it can be set to CBR. Mostly, a lot of people just use CBR. And so for bit rate, so something about bit rate. Uh, bitrate is how much, how much of the content, how much of the file you are sending over to Twitch. So, Twitch recommends somewhere in between two thousand five hundred to six thousand. Six thousand being the most optimum for ten eighty uh pixels and sixty FPS. But mine right now, I am not a Twitch partner, and I don't have any transcoding options. Transcoding options meaning um uh the quality of your stream when people watch your stream like youtube you can check for 720p if your internet is very slow you can go down to 480 or 360 so that's your transcoding options when you're not affiliated by twitch yet you won't have that uh just like me <laughs> so uh what i do is i go down to 4500 uh kilobytes per second and that is i i found out that's the most optimum for now so it'll be Maybe 1080, but only 30 FPS, or maybe it'll drop down a bit to 900 plus, depending on your on the I think the Twitch server or the your internet connection lah. And then if you're using NVEC, NVIDIA NVEC, uh, the preset should be max quality always. But if you're using X2 uh, X264, uh, this one it goes on a scaling of. The ultra fast, super fast, very fast, and faster and fast. If you go on these settings, it means that the video quality that you put output on Twitch will be lower, but it will be very uh, lighter on your PC. So, for instance, if you're playing a game and you don't want your game to drop frames, you can go there. You can go to super fast, very fast, or fast, faster. However, if you uh, if your PC is okay and it's not uh, it can handle uh it can handle the wear i think you can go to medium medium is okay anything above medium is overkill and then next we'll look in the audio so the only things you want to look here is 
the uh, sample rate and the desktop audio. So the sample rate, a lot I've seen they use 44.1 kilohertz, I think. But I don't know why mine is set for set for 48 lah. But uh, generally speaking, uh, when you start OBS, 48 kilohertz is okay already. It doesn't need any more uh, adjusting. And channel stereo, uh, this one is about how they do, I think, the rounding, I think. The, the sound system that surrounds, I think. Which I which a lot of streamers do not use, I think. Maybe some, but mostly don't. But a lot of people, they would go for stereo, and that's the way they go. For your desktop audio, you can set it to default. Desktop audio is what you hear. So for now, I'm using uh, earpods. So this is what I'm hearing. And when you set this desktop audio to uh, the device that you're listening to, this will also be the ones that your viewers will be listening to. So for instance, I'll put mine as speakers uh, real tech. So for instance, when I listen to a song or when I listen to a YouTube video, uh, I will be listening the same thing as my viewers will. And for most of this, uh, you can just leave it by its own. Next, video. So video, uh, your base canvas. Your base canvas is actually your monitor resolution. So if your monitor is at uh, 1080, uh, you go 1080. If your monitor is at 2K, you go 2K and so on. And the output scale, output scale resolution is actually uh, the quality of your stream that you're outputting to switch. So for me, I want... I want my viewers to see 1080 if they can <laughs> for a better viewing experience. So I put it to nine, uh, the dimension 1920, 1080. That's the, uh, that's the 1080 dimension. But if you want your viewers, if you feel that your game is dropping frames because of it, your internet is very slow, you feel you can drop it to 20, uh, 1280, 720. This is the dimension for 720 resolution. Uh, downscale filter, uh, everyone I saw, a lot of them just used by cubic lah. Yeah, you, don't, you don't have to uh, do anything for that one. Oh. Uh, and the common FPS value, uh, if you feel, also if you feel that your, your frame rate is dropping in your games, you can put it down to 30. Or if you feel it is okay, you can just go to 60. Now hotkeys, hotkeys are your preference. If you feel that you want to change into uh, different scenes during your stream, you can do so. But for me, I have not mastered this one yet, and I will not. <laughs> so for advanced, uh, nothing much here actually. But that is all that we're going uh, through for the five percent of what you would uh, disturb around your settings. So you click apply. Okay. So for the uh, so for the main part of it, how do you actually start uh, putting scenes and overlays? So for first streaming, uh, first your scene, yeah. Please ignore the in-game BRB animation. <laughs> so I'll just put it as streaming. So let's say you want to stream a game. Let's say you want to stream Super Mario, for example. So you click add. You can either do display capture. Or you can do game capture. But if you use game capture, it'll be more optimized on your, and it won't be as heavy as if you use display capture on your PC. Because uh, display capture, it will eat up a lot of your, I just say to use power, uh, the word power, it will lose a lot of your power from your PC. So if you use game capture, it actually just captures uh, a specific window in your game. But if display capture, it will just cap uh, capture everything that you have in your PC. So I'll just uh, use this button here. Uh, the I button means that see and not see, basically. So if you want to see the display capture uh, in what you are streaming, you can click on the I button. Without the, the I slash, it will show. So this is a bit inception because I'm actually displaying the capture of what I'm showing to you guys. So it will display again the capture to you guys, it will caption to you guys, and till infinity. Lah. And what you can do is, you can go down here, and you can add uh, a video capture device. This is your webcam. And 
you can add an existing your webcam for me i had it uh, i had it prior but okay i'll show you before this you can add a video capture device add a video capture device click ok then you find your webcam mine is hd pro webcam and you click ok then it will appear on your screen mine did not appear on my screen because i'm using it for webex right now so that's why it's not appearing on my screen so if so you would have it and you would drag it anywhere that you like beyond this it is your towards your own creativity what you feel that it's nice for your stream for your audience what they like to see some people they put their cameras on the left some on the right bottom bottom left bottom right bottom up all around the place they would put it but for me personally i like to put it on the left uh so for for instance uh that's the visual part of it how about the audio part of it what if you want people to hear and listen for uh, the things you do and the games you play so you click add and you go to audio input capture i'll just name this audio capture audio input capture stream okay so what device are you using for this part so audio input audio input meaning what are you inputting to to your viewers what are they listening to from you so from you from me sorry from you me i don't know so i'll be uh putting here my microphone I click ok and here you will see that it's capturing my voice you see uh turn the green red and yellow it means that it's detecting my voice and for the output of what uh your viewers will also listen to i'll just I'll put it on audio capture stream so this is what they'll be listening to from your gameplay not not yourself so this is you can uh sorry this one is the one that you are listening to yeah this is the one that you're what you're listening to oh uh, i cannot i cannot show you the how actually the camera works but i think i can do something like this so this is what i'm capturing right now i'm capturing obs itself so <laughs> if i would like to put a device say obs virtual camera it's also not capturing never mind lah. <laughs> so uh for instance for when you have the uh all the elements in your sources you should always go front to back meaning that the background is the bottom at the bottom of uh, the sources and anything that should go on top of it should be at the top of the list so for instance your video capture device your webcam your webcam should always be on top because uh it will not be layered on the see as a sources so display capture or game device is will be uh, your background and your video capture device will always be on top uh, that's how i would do it and uh, there are a lot of things that you can do here uh, one of them is with scene transitions so for instance <clears throat> so instance i went out and had dinner so i display this on my screen and this is what my viewers will see. We are back having dinner. So I come back to my stream and I'm doing an intermission, for instance. And this is where my camera will be. I don't have it right now because, yeah. <laughs> so when I go from a transition from BRB to intermission, you can change the uh, scene transitions here. Uh, a lot of people I see, they use Stinger because that is when you can animate your, um, you can animate your transitions. Like how michael did when i saw his stream i didn't do it because i'm very lazy <laughs> so a lot of people sometimes they use swipe i think so when they go swipe it'll be like that it's quite plain quite simple but it works anything that would uh, make your enhance your streams to become more fun and engaging for, uh, for your viewers uh okay so do you guys have any questions 
Wait, hold on. Right. So, do you guys have any questions? <laughs> nope, all calls, calls from me. No questions. I think, Mr. Josh, do you have a question, Mr. Josh? <laughs> Uh, I don't really have any questions. I think I actually understand what you're talking about. <laughs> Mr. Govin Raj, do you have any questions? No, sir. <laughs> so anyone, do you have any questions you may ask? Uh, but also, like, one thing about when you start streaming, you as a streamer, you as the host of your stream, your the broadcaster, you should entertain uh, the people watching you, not them entertaining you. So you should find your own viewers, and you don't, you cannot force them to watch your streams, and you cannot force them to follow you, because, uh, it will seem like you are a charity case. You know what I mean? You're begging people to watch you. You're begging people to, you know, so uh, subscribe to you. You're begging people to engage with you, whereas you are the ones. You are the one who should be engaging with them. You should be the one entertaining them, not the other way around. And also, the thing about streaming is, is that when you stream, you might not have a lot of viewers uh, starting off, just like me, and still is. I don't have a lot of viewers. But that is where, uh, that, is where that separates you from people who give effort and people, how people success, uh, succeed. So if you don't do anything, if you don't have these uh, ideas, you don't, you're not putting out new content, how are the people uh, going to be attracted to you? How are they going to stick by and always watch you play? So this is the one thing that you have to think about if you start streaming. If you've done the first step right, uh, when I showed you this now of setting up, that is already the first step. The second step is to think about what are you going to do actually? What games are you going to play? Do you play games that you like? Or do you play games that you think a lot of people uh, uh, a, lot, a, a lot of people would watch and the answer is you should always play the games that you love to play not the games that a lot of people want to watch because if you want if you play the game that people a lot of people want to watch is that's the game that you're not going to enjoy yourself you're not going to have ideas on how to grow your content you're not going to have any inspiration from that so you should always 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 play the games that you love to play and the thing about uh, Twitch also is that there's one simple rule on Twitch is that do not ever ever post a link to your Twitch channel on other people's stream. That is just uh, plain disrespectful and it should never be done, ever. That is uh, something, the guidelines I'd say on Twitch that is never disclosed by Twitch because it's something of a moral, a moral, you know, you know, just don't take other people's food, things like that. Don't, <laughs> yeah. It's not something that Twitch told you, but it is something among streamers that they know the rules that you should respect other people. And what else is there I can talk about? Hmm. <laughs> so, um, oh, sorry. Someone wants to join in. Meeting. Okay. Okay, so here in this session, I'll be giving it over to a speaker, Michael, also known as Michael Spidey from Twitch. So he'll be the one that will uh, talk to you guys about maybe how he started streaming, what gave him the inspiration to go, and how did he continue to uh, stream. So uh, do what you want, Spidey, and yeah, have fun. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> what the hell, Chan? Why do you say your background? Like in conference, all uh, right. Sorry, yes. uh, thank you, Marcel. Uh, thank you. I'm not sure if I can call it that, but um, thank you. Um, thank you for sharing. Like, I do think you share a lot about the OBS one, like a lot of things, not really the lot, but I can say some of the things that you share in OBS settings. I didn't really know some of them, and just do like the basics, like what you said, like uh, what OB OBS provided the optimal settings already uh, good enough for you to do. Like, you can just learn some basics from the YouTube, like what you need to tweak, like what you said just now for the output, the KBPS, like if your Wi-Fi can handle that much, you can just turn down to like 4,500. I did that as well. And then after my Wi-Fi improved, I also like slowly increase it to test like if it's better. So yeah, I do feel like your, your sharing is very education. Like 
a lot that like I learned learn some from that as well. So yeah, thank you for sharing. Um, well, for me, uh, yeah, let me start with like, uh, why do I start streaming? I started streaming since last year. I think it's around September, September twenty twenty. Like I just uh, on Sam break and I feel like uh, streaming because I'm playing games every day during Sam break at home. I feel like unproductive, you know. Like also my, my mom would like keep yelling at me, why are you playing games? Why are you playing games? But it's Sam break. <laughs> what can I do? I mean, I can find part-time job, but I don't have the means of transport. So then I started thinking, like, oh, I can try do streaming. Maybe can earn something from it. And then I stream with one of my other friends. Uh, he's Winter KJ, but... Uh, we don't really like work together, just stream on our own and just stream for fun. I even tried streaming on Facebook, on YouTube as well, and Twitch. But uh, Twitch didn't really start up well for me because uh, my social, my friends around like my uh, social circle, they don't really use Twitch. Like, a lot of them just watch Facebook or other uh, Chinese live or some stuff. So my Twitch wasn't going that time. But I didn't mind just uh, testing out. Like my stream on Facebook even like get got more friends uh like engage with me, but then it's just some normal streaming. But it was fun testing out, it was a good experience. Like I learned a bit about Twitch and then OBS, how to set up and then the alerts as well. Like I learned to add the follow alert. Then when my friends like they helped me test out the follow alert, I was so excited seeing that thing pop up in my screen. What well, Limi OTP is for is now following Michael's right. It's, it's like a very fun experience. Like you can you see other streamers, your name pop up there, and then you see your own stream, the name pop up there, it's like a different feeling. Um, what in, then what inspired me to stream is, um, there's a YouTuber called uh, Salty Fish, that I know like other like famous uh, streamers like Pokemon, uh, Ninja, they do Twitch streams, but then I didn't really like, like watching people's streams, I, don't, I just watch YouTube videos. Then I watched, uh, one day I just popped into Salty Fish YouTube video, it was very funny, and I knew that he also streams on Twitch. And he's not a pro player, he streams Overwatch. I don't even watch, I don't even play Overwatch. I just like watching him play and have fun with his friends, like jokes. That makes me like, it's very cool, like he's just streaming and just have fun with friends, just chill and joke around, and that's good enough content for him to stream. Then he's, his, his content inspired me, so I just feel like, oh, why not just give it a try, like very fun. Then just started watch all of his Overwatch videos, like I don't even play them, I just learned. How what or watch is and then through his stream, um. But then, however, during uh, the September the twenty twenty one, uh, my Twitch wasn't growing and it's because I just chill around. And then my school started, so I just stopped streaming there. And then until this year, around I think it was April, yeah, April, April twenty twenty one this year, uh, I had a school a college assignment which is an event one. Like our teacher wants, not teacher, like our members want us to stream on Facebook for the event, to stream the Google Meet onto Facebook. Then, I was, then they knew I had like a streaming uh, history, so they asked me to help around because I know how to use OBS. So I touch again, I get in touch again with the OBS and feel like uh, quite cool. I feel like streaming again. Then also one of my friends around me, uh, he's called Tom. His Twitch is what mouse uh, mouse seven i multi seven. And then he is also streaming, like he's growing very well. He know a lot of Twitch friends. Then I just feel like, oh, why not I stream again uh, when I have another Sam break? Because I feel like it. So starting from this year, April, I started streaming again. I met a lot of Twitch friends and I managed to grow my channel, like knowing uh, more viewers, more friends, uh, getting to know them and other Twitch friends as well. And then started to growing from there. I started to improve my stream and even set up uh, <laughs> like a, side, a phone cam right here and then using my uh, front cam device, this kind of stuff. And then uh, I even started connecting to like a second monitor device to better monitor my stream. And then like add on like the about in under my Twitch channel to intro myself. And then some alerts also like it's playing right now in my stream. <laughs> but yeah, so that's basically sound like, like the story about my streaming uh, story, I guess. So yeah. Um, I think I can share about like how to set up your stream, just a bit of a small sharing, I guess, for me. Like what uh, Wasa Chan said, like you have to learn the basic of OBS, like our Streamlabs as well. They're all free. You can just download for free. Like what he said, it doesn't cost you a penny. You just download using a Wi-Fi. So they're all free. You can just test it out. And then I think it's important that you learn the basics from the YouTube. You don't just download it and then you just stream whatever you want. You have to learn the basics. Like YouTube is your best friend. You have to learn how and then before you do it, because yeah. And then second, what I think is important that you have to test out your stream after you did the OBS settings. You don't straight away just like, oh, 
set up your cam, set up your mic, like set up everything very pro. But most importantly, you have to test out your stream. Like if to test out your stream is like you have to test out your own equipment, your Wi-Fi especially. Like if your house Wi-Fi doesn't even manage to help you stream your games and stuff, even if you have like a very good camera, a very good mic, a very good setup, but your equipment, your PC, your specs, your Wi-Fi shit, your stream won't go anywhere. So yeah, you have to like test your stream first. Like if it it goes well, everything's well, Wi-Fi is good. Then you can like slowly uh, set up your cam and stuff. Like uh, like before, I learned some basics like what, what you need to stream. Like you just need a Wi-Fi, a mic, even and just a PC. That's it. You don't need a, a very pro stuff to have, have to become like a pro streamer. Uh, and then third step, I think is like you have to set up the alerts, like the following alerts to engage with your streamers. This part, I think, like it's a very important thing that you have to engage with your chat, engage with your viewers, because like not just you just stream for yourself, you shock some theory. so then people will just not like want to watch you, just you just doing your stuff. But then of course you have to just chill around, but also you have to like entertain your chat at the same time and also engage with them. But you are, of course you have to you do you. If you don't feel like it, you just maybe streaming is not your stuff, I guess. But depends. But also like set up overlays, extensions, like some alerts for your viewers to engage with you. Not like they just watch you. Maybe they will feel boring. And then also, most importantly, you introduce yourself to your viewers. I guess like if you don't let your viewers know who you are, they're just like uh, maybe not so interested in you. Like you didn't even tell them about anything about yourself. They just be bored. And then I think next is just like you just start putting up your cam, mic, and other equipments that you want like sound bots and other stuff like you feel like that can improve your stream so yeah and i think like you just keep on re-watching your stream and can also learn from other streamers like how to improve your own stream and yeah i think that's it <laughs> hope i didn't go too fast like too long but yeah that was very that's it for Tifka. all right thank you michael spidey no yeah i do agree with him like you have to always like review yourself and see what improvements you can make uh and a lot of this, uh, these alerts, these sound bots, those are all based on your creativity and how you want to improve them. Of course, it is not necessary. Twitch doesn't say you have to do it, but it is something that, uh, that engages you closer to your audience and the ones uh, watching you. Sometimes they, I think, uh, like Verified Psycho, also a fellow Malaysian streamer, I saw like if someone subscribes, I think, they did like a, I can't remember what they did, but there was like a, this ritual or something that they did. Oh, when someone raided him, there's this ritual. So it's like you're engaging your viewers with you, you're engaging people to watch and subscribe without, by default, you, uh, what do you call it? What's that word? You unexpectedly, uh, one help out, uh, you unexpectedly have people following you just to have that ritual or subscribe to you just to have that ritual if you're watching a certain streamer, for example. So that is also how you can attract uh, followers or subscribers, not by asking them to follow you, but uh, attracting them through entertaining them. And there's a, also a big difference between uh, begging them to follow you and reminding them to follow you. So when you remind someone to follow you, it's more of uh, you just put it out there you don't mind if someone follows you or not. But if you beg someone, that it, you're considered a charity case already. So yeah, and it is true what uh, Spidey, Michael Spidey said. So he said like, uh, you should always like watch YouTube before you set up uh, your equipment or your, your OBS and all. It is very quite true. Even before this meeting, I, <laughs> I even YouTube this. So I knew more a bit before you actually start committing to it. So... I think one of my lecturers said that it's all on your fingertips, I think. So it's all on Google, it's all on YouTube. Just watch it out. If you feel that you want to create something new for your stream, you want to have more engagement with your stream, you can just always YouTube and search on how they do this, how to do that. I'm so curious about this. So every I, I think a lot of YouTube videos I saw, they really uh, give you step by step on how you, you could do it. Some of them are free, some of them are not. But any... Any information that you get is precious. So with this, I think uh, maybe you could all start streaming. <laughs> but yeah, I would like to add on mm. something if you don't mind. Yeah, sure, sure. <laughs> all right, thank you. Uh, 
another thing I think I forgot to add about in my streaming story is like, uh, I'm very grateful to meet like a lot of other Twitch friends, like Malaysian streamers. I, I didn't expect there's a lot of other small Malaysian streamers. I thought like <clears> the <throat> Twitch streams that like Pokemon, those big streamers, that's all. I didn't know like there's other Malaysian streamers. I'm like quite surprised. I'm very grateful that I meet them. Like they all help out each other. Like we all help each other, like they, they help me, like teach me the ropes on, like also improve the streaming stuff. And also like, especially like Tom, I know a lot of friends through uh, Tom, one of my friends. And then they just chill out and help out each other. And then we just, uh, like they, they will like drop by my chat. I also drop by their chat. Like it's very helpful. Like, well, I say like last year, September, like I was streaming alone. I felt quite lonely and then it's not going anywhere. But when this year I started, like I saw a lot of other friends streaming together. It made me feel less lonely. It's like there's people around me that can like grow together. It felt very, it felt very, um, you know, like uh, people supporting each other. It makes it makes mm. you feel different. Like if you're alone on the, this platform, you just really like you don't know where to start, where to go. Like you don't have any friends. Like you don't know how to grow yourself. But we have friends around. Like you can always like rely on them. You can ask them uh, to join together to help each other. Like or um like they, they are very really willing to help each other like they like last time we played among us together like, it was very fun as well so i think like sure, um sure. very grateful to meet like uh, other major streamers so like helping each other out is very important as well so yeah sure. all right thank you so much for it and also i'd like to give a shout out to no him problem. because he's the like the first one i i think major streamer that i ever knew well outside of my friends i think yeah outside of my friends so he's like the first ever guy who ever reached out. He rated me. And then when he rated me, a lot of his friends knew me again. And then, you know, one thing led to another, one thing led to another. And then here we are. But I'm not saying that I have a lot of views or what. I still have work uh, improvement to do. But also, just a reminder, streaming is also a, a hobby that you can do. You cannot expect the best that you can out of it unless you want to really make it a career. But if you want to expect a lot from it, you have to give a lot to it. If that's what this makes sense to, to you. <laughs> so, um, yeah, so everything went well. So I think we can end this session. Uh, thank you for everyone who participated. And, and there's also like a Google form I feel that you guys can fill out later uh, anytime and give any feedbacks if you like so thank you so much everyone who joined and thank you for uh, michael who spend your time joining this one hour session and not streaming no problem no problem doing this yeah so thank you everybody thank you so much and have a good night stay safe bye 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 guys thank you thank you guys <clears throat> thank you i i i